So the summertime is great because unlike the spring where it was time after time after time, more and more galaxies, you know, galaxies are great, but after a while, we need some variety. So the summer gives us variety in the finest NGC list. Um, there are fewer of them, but more variety, as I said. And uh, of course, tonight's a full moon. So this is not the night to be chasing finest NGC objects, but I'll, I'll highlight them and, uh, you know, give it a week. And then we'll get to our third quarter moon period beginning, and it'll be great times to look at the deep sky objects of the summer. Let me just set this to a nice time like 1030, and I'll just advance a few days. Just pretend there's no moon around. There we go. And here we go. Let's bring these up. And I've got some bookmarks. Here we go. So there's some really cool objects in this list. So first of all, we've got the summer Milky Way coming up from the southern horizon. And all of our objects are going to be kind of Milky Way uh, related objects. First up, we've got my list here. We've got the Snow Globe Nebula or Ghost of the Moon Nebula. And the first time I saw this, I was blown away. I thought, well, oh, that's cool. I was not unaware of it before. That's NGC 6781. And it sits here in the northern wing of Aquila. And I'll just zoom in here a little bit. And it's not this bright in reality, but I'll, I'll bring up the digital sky survey image of it so you can sort of get a sense of it. There we go. And in doing some research, what's neat about this, it's a planetary nebula, and it's um, probably a kind of a cylinder of gas that we're looking down. So the, the, so the bright, the most concentrated gas sections are on the perimeter, unlike, say, the ring nebula, which is more of a spherical object. So this is thought to be kind of a, spheric, uh, a cylindrical object that we're looking down the, the center of. It's pointing in our direction. Um, it requires a medium and larger aperture telescopes and dark skies to see well. Uh, it's not as bright as it looks like on the Stellarium here. It was discovered by William Herschel back on July 30th of 1788. So it's number 743 of his class three objects. And as I said a minute ago, it's easily located in Aquila. I'll just put this stars back on here so we can see where it is. So when you're looking at Aquila, you've got the summer triangle up here with Altair in the corner of it. You've got Almazan, which is the kind of heart of the eagle. That's the star, a delta. And then it's about, you know, on the line. This is just barely off the line joining delta with OCAB or um, Zeta Aquilae. And I think it's about 37% of the way along the journey. Um, what you can also do is for, you know, for cross purposes, you can kind of look at Altair and look at the star Alia, which is in Serpents. And you sort of know that the, the glow, snow globe is on the line connecting them and on the line connecting these two. So that kind of gives you that sense. Uh, in a telescope, that's that's how big it would look in a six inch uh, Newtonian using a 26 millimeter Plossel telescope, Plossel eyepiece, so it's not that large in that view. But this one's great if you've got a um, an oxygen three filter or a UHC filter that'll brighten it up for you. And what you want to do is um, magnify it and start kind of looking at the size, the shape, kind of take get a sense of how the brightness varies around the clock as you go around the edge of the nebula, and uh, and see if you can see the central star. You know, uh, planetary nebulas, many of them have central stars that are observable. Not sure if you will, but take a look and see. And this one's about 3,100 light years away. All right, next up. So next up, we're gonna hop up here to Volpecula. So heading, you know, on the edge of the summer triangle, inside the summer triangle a bit, there's Alberio, just for reference. So NGC 6802 is uh, a cool little open cluster and it's right at the tip at the end of the coat hanger asterism or, or cluster. So there's the line of stars in the coat hanger and then the hook of stars below. I've got the stars a little bit um, over bloated here, a little bit brighter than they really look, but that's the cluster there. 
And so if you can find the coat hanger and just look to the eastern end of it. So this, this uh, star cluster can be seen in any size of a telescope, but if you've got more than 100 millimeters of aperture, you're going to have a bet, the best view of it. Discovered by William Herschel back on July 11th of 1784, number 14 of his class six objects. And as I said, the coat hanger sits basically between Altair and Vega, uh, a little less than halfway. So if you pick that up in your binoculars or your finder scope, then you can easily zero in on NGC 6802 at the end of, end of it and in a telescope. It doesn't look like much here. Let me just bring up the digital sky survey image and turn off the stars here. So it's kind of a um, kind of a brighter patch against the background stars. If I actually make it a little bit bigger, let's go with a 14 millimeter colossal. There you can start to see it's kind of a, it's not a round cluster. So um, what you wanna do is start with say 50 power, maybe a little bit more, try to see the faint cluster. It's actually framed by uh, kind of a box of field stars. That's kind of cool about it. And some of those are doubles. You can see there's a couple of pairs in here. So that's neat to note. Um, then sort of crank up the magnification and start looking for how many stars there are in the cluster. What shape do you see? Uh, all the stars varying, do the stars vary in color? What kind of color stars do you see? Things like that. All right, next up, we've got kind of a two for one. So this is actually the Veil Nebula. Just bring up the stars here. There we go. And we'll go back to the full sky. There we go. So if you're looking at Cygnus, and you can find Deneb and Saturn, the, the two main stars in the center of the cross shape, his lower wing extends downward. And near that lower wing, you can count one star, two stars. And if you sort of re rewind your steps and look to the, to the west, to the right, there's a, a, a medium bright star, naked eye star, called uh, 52 Cygni, that's visible with just your eyes. If you aim your telescope at that star and zoom in, then you're gonna pick up the supernova remnant called the Cygnus Loop or Veil Nebula, there are different names for it. This particular piece of it is called the Witch's Broom. So it's sort of the 52 Cygni is the witch sitting on the broomstick with the, the straw kind of near the bottom. Um, you can see the whole nebula in binoculars if you're if you get out to dark skies. So that, that's kind of cool. And then you can use your telescope to zoom in on sections of it. So when you zoom in, you're going to see this sort of um, swath of brightness, nebulosity crossing through the star. Then you're going to be able to sweep around and trace out the extent of it north and to the north and to the south. Uh, UHC or oxygen three filter will be a great way to reduce the impact of 52 Cygni and any other of the field stars around it and really make the, the nebulosity stand out. Um, if you get, you know, once you get used to the idea, you can then start sweeping uh, around the loop, try to follow your, follow your steps around the loop. If you decide to start at 52 Cygni again, you can go straight across and then look for the other half, and the other half is the next finest NGC in the list. So this is NGC um, 99A, and then the other half is 99B. Um, the reason I've got them labeled as C here is that they're also in Patrick Moore's Caldwell list. They're Caldwell 33 and 34 on his list. So much the same idea. Now, if you want to, I would never probably look at the east half without already having found the west half, but if you did want to start with East Half, all you need to do is take these two stars and Cygnus's wing, look about halfway between them, and then it's about a degree to the west. So that's another way of kind of aiming your finder scope. Pick up those as well. This is arguably a little bit brighter than the Witch's Broom section, so that's kind of a neat one to find. It doesn't sort of stretch quite as long, but you know when you're looking at these sections, you want to observe the um, the orientation, the shape, the size. Uh, maybe sketch. This would be a great object to um, to spend some time sketching, and uh, and yeah, just enjoy this this whole supernova remnant. They think maybe happened about five to eight thousand years ago, 
And this is the remains of it. And it's about 1,475 light years away from us. All right, let's go back, pick up a few more of these. So the next one I've got here is the Mothra cluster. That's NGC 6940. And it's actually pretty close to the to the to the Veil Nebula or Cygnus loop. So 6940 is here. Uh, this one is sitting in a relatively rich part of the Milky Way. Again, I'm going to switch to the DSS image so I can show you how it stands out against the background. There we go. So you can see the whole, you know, the Milky Way enriches the star, the background star field with a population of, of faint stars in the background. But you can see this sort of condensation bright patch here. And if I put it in the eyepiece, and I'll just wind the, the magnification. You want to go down, start with low magnification on this. So this one is, um, as I said, it's about 3.3 degrees from the uh, 52 Cygni star. So let me just kind of come back out for a second here and show you, have those stars back on. And what I remarked is that you could, you could take this and you could aim your finder about midway between uh, Gamma Delphinus, so the nose of the dolphin, and Saturn, the bright star in Cygnus, and it's on that line connecting the two almost near the middle. So that would be a way of starting with low power and kind of using that trick to find the object. Uh, you want to note the cluster shape, the number of stars you see, the, the patterns of bright and dark, and any anomalous star colors that you might notice. And there are, then you can zoom in and see if you see any little mini asterisms and star patterns inside. It's about 2,600 light years away. All right, we got two left. Next up, I thought we'd go up to the Foxhead Cluster, NGC 6819. So that you can see here is in kind of makes is in this triangle um, in the upper wing above Saturn. This is a, a small but pretty rich open cluster superimposed against the background of the Milky Way. And again, I'll kind of reveal that here. You can see it's much more concentrated, much more. A contrast against the background Milky Way, and it's got some really nice field stars accompanying it. Uh, so that kind of makes it nice, makes it nice and easy as well. You can see this cluster in big binoculars, ten by fifties. If the sky is dark, um, any size of telescope will work great. Discovered this one was actually discovered by Caroline Herschel um, on May 12, seventeen eighty four, and then later on William viewed it as well, and other people as well logged it and sort of discovered it. So this one actually doesn't have a Herschel designation. So it's, it's out of the mix. Um, as I said, it's located about, I'll just bring this back to here. Let's just do this. So it's about uh, a thumbs width from the midpoint between the stars Eta Cygni. So Eta Cygni is the, in the neck of the swan. And what did I pick here? Oh, that, not that, yeah, let's see. And Fawaris. So yeah, if you pick up Fawaris and at a Cygni, it's kind of above the midpoint of the two. Um, you could do it that way. You'll also notice that it's bracketed by a couple of brighter stars here as well. So uh, 19 Cygni. So here's 19 Cygni here and 14 Cygni. So you'll be able to see those in binoculars for sure, and maybe in a finder scope, and you'll be able to spot about midway, a little bit to the west of those two. I thought this was really interesting in the eyepiece. Um, you wanna start again at low magnification and zoom in, of course, and look for the, I thought it resembled a bit of a, almost like a globular cluster when I actually, when I viewed it in my scope. So note it's, count its stars, note its shape, look for patterns, mini, mini asterisms, note its density and stars that are not like the others. This one's about 6,700 light years away. Last up is a really neat one. It's the Crescent Nebula. And the Crescent Nebula sits on the neck of the swan. So there's Alberio off to my upper right here. There's Saturn in the heart of the swan. There's Eta Cygni on the midway along the neck of the swan. So it's really along that line, really easy to aim your telescope at it. Um, this is a, a concentrated emission nebula. There we go. 
Um, it might be a supernova remnant. I've seen reports to talk about both. Um, and what's neat is that it's got more intense, brighter sections of it that can actually be picked up in big binoculars under dark skies and definitely in any size of a telescope. But if you've got a big telescope, bigger aperture, you'll be able to pick up lots more details and lots more cool aspects of it. Um, it was discovered by William Herschel on September 15th of 1792, number 72 of his class five objects. And um, yeah, it's about a third of the way from Saturn to Eta, as you can see here. Uh, this one works great with an, a UHC filter or an oxygen filter. Again, don't over magnify it. So if I go to the simulated view, that's the sort of 65X view here. No, that's the 35 power view. So that's the lowest magnification I've got set up in a six inch Newtonian. So it, you can see it's quite substantial in size, but um, you know, start with the overview, note its shape, note its structure, look for the, uh, the field stars around it. And also it's actually got a Wolf Rayette star in the center of it. So that's the one that's kind of shining here in the middle of the symbol. So you wanna take a look at that. And if you've got a larger aperture telescope, you can start looking for the irregularities in the gas. So this one's about 4,700 light years away. And that's it for this, for this time. We'll see you uh, back in a month. We'll wrap up finest NGCs and we'll be live at York U. Fingers crossed that all, it all works well. See you then. All right, keep looking up everybody. Keep looking up, bye now.